Okay, the experiment set up today is, is we're going to take a look at possible galvanic or telluric cells in parallel. What we have set up here is I have two magnesium rods. I'm going to find them in the rangefinder. Okay, there's one magnesium rod. I have a jumper going over and I have a second magnesium rod over here, right there it, it is. And what we're going to do is we're going to take single cell measurement and then jumper both cells together in parallel. And on this end, there is a graphite rod and we are jumping over to another graphite rod right there. And there again, the white lead is running to some red wire and heading all, all the way down to the other end. Okay, I've started back up. This is with a single cell and we're hooked up where the positive lead of the meter is going to the graphite rod, the negative lead of the meter is going to the magnesium rods. Okay, this is a single cell. This happens to be the cell I'm going to call the left one. This is orientated from my backyard to the front of the house. The next reading will be the uh, right hand cell. Okay, the reading I have here is now the right hand cell. Next reading I will take, I'm going to jumper both cells together and do a reading along the entire cell to see that the battery voltage is pretty much the same. Okay, this is the reading with uh, both anodes and both cathode, cathodes connected in parallel. Next reading I'm going to take is I'm going to go ahead and do a series current measurement with uh, the total parallel configuration and then we'll separate the series. Okay, this reading is uh, what we're getting in milliamps. This is with both cells jumpered together and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reach down and I'm going to take and disconnect the uh, cathode on this one side. Uh, so we're disconnecting the cathode it should isolate. Now we have watched our current now that the meter is reading has dropped by a little bit. This is definitely not an additive where you're getting two cells in parallel and you're gaining something. So this is a single. What I'm going to do is back down. We'll disconnect the jumper from the other side to make sure that we are indeed isolated as a single cell. Okay, let's go look at our current reading. Our current reading, now that I tripped my wire. Ugh. Okay, hold one. I have to connect back to the electrode. Okay, power cord yanked it. And now we are reading just a little bit lower. This is a single set of cathode and anode. When I took and broke the connection here in the beginning, uh, we were looking at two cathodes and a single anode. So that changed our plate size configuration. Next thing will be to hook a uh, load in series with a single one and see what type of drop we get here. For us to see what type of voltage we're reading. Okay, to make life easier, I decided to go ahead and uh, set up my tripod, which I should have done in the first place. Well, let's just stay concentrated on the meter. Uh, what I have now is I have a 5.501 kilo ohm resistor. It's a little 1 8 watt resistor. I bet we don't need nothing any bigger. This is just so you can see what the load is of the resistor itself. And I'm going to go ahead. We're still on a single cell configuration. I'm going to take and now hook the resistor up into a series with a single cell. This is uh, when I say single cell, single anode, single cathode. So let's go to DC and Hooking the negative lead up to the cathode. Here, of course, we have nothing at the moment. 
Uh, we have the resistor here that can be seen dangling in front of the meter. Okay, this little thing I am now hooking up to what we have coming from the uh, anode. Let's see what we get for the voltage measurement. Okay, we are now reading 1.536 volts. This is single cell configuration. Now I'm going to reconfigure the meter to see what we have for a current drain. The meter is now reading in milliamps. So uh, with the resistive load, we are now pulling uh, 0.23 milliamps through the load. I am now going to go ahead and hook up uh, both of the cathodes. I've got those jumpers, so we'll do a single part of the cell at a time. This is with two cathodes in parallel. Now I'm going to go connect to two anodes in parallel. The uh, two anodes are in parallel, and we still have a steady current going through the load. The good thing about that is at least it is stable. 0.24 milliamps at the voltage we were getting is right nice for an energy harvesting circuit. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to disconnect the load and unhook the battery, the ground battery, back up with the plates left in the parallel configuration so we can see what we get now. Okay, the resistor is now disconnected, and this is the multimeter only in series with the loading on it. And I don't know exactly, it's either probably 1 mega ohm, 10 mega ohms, I don't know what the loading is. Uh, right here, we're seeing 4.7 4 increasing 4.8 milliamps, and this is through the meter itself, and it's steadily increasing up. Uh, I'm going to reconfigure uh, the meter. We're now over 5 milliamps, and I'm going to go back to voltage and see what we have for a plate voltage. Okay, our plate voltage started off, uh, as you can see, around 1.4 to something range and some change, and is now s slowly going upward. Uh, what I'm going to do now is switch to resistance and see what the ground resistance is between the pair of anodes and a pair of cathodes. Okay, ground resistance is pretty similar to what I've been seeing in the past. Okay, that's 51.23 kiloohms. I am going to go ahead and disconnect the jumper between the two anodes and now we will be dealing correction. Between the two cathodes, we will be dealing with two anodes connected and then a jumper in between those and a single cathode. We are now in a single, single cathode configuration. I am going to split the other cell so we are reading a single anode. Okay, we are now in a single anode configuration, uh, no real change in resistance, no real change in current when we've been switching configuration, so this is good. Uh, we're not having what you would expect in a parallel resistive circuit. If this was, if the ground was acting like a pure resistance, I think this is more as like uh, resistance from electrolytic action in the soil itself not as a true resistive element. We've got a lot of functions going on here because we have EM, magnetics, everything else in the world. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to voltage and see what we are in single cell configuration and go back again. Okay, that is voltage, single cell configuration. I'm going to go back to a dual cathode configuration. That is voltage with a dual cathode. I am going to go down and now hook up both anodes together.
both anodes are configured and once again we're still looking like about a 1.5 volt cell overall and I am going to switch one more time to current and see what a final current reading is correction let's get to current Okay, we start about 4.47 milliamps approximately and climbing. Now we are back up to over 5 milliamps. That concludes this experiment.